Hi folks, welcome to Black Bear's Detailed YouTube channel. Whether you're here because you're into detailing or you're here to check out the view on this uh, modular workstation, thank you for tuning in and please remember to press subscribe. Uh, this is going to be a quick rundown and review of the Clark Modular Storage System. This is a 25 piece system. Uh, right now it's on their website at just over £2,300. Uh, I ordered mine from Machine Mart. Uh, the, the entire thing paid with by my own money. I never got any money off, any discounts, anything like that to do a review on it. So basically I can say exactly what I want about it. Uh, first, uh, the Machine Mart side of things were, to be honest, pretty poor. I contacted them prior to ordering it, A, to make sure that it was in stock and B, to get an approximate delivery date. Now, bear in mind that I bought this just before the lockdown came into effect, uh, but even still, I contacted them to make sure it was in stock, which it was, and a delivery estimate which was given prior to actually paying them the money. Once I paid them the money, a week to 10 days passed, contacted them, and the response was, what do you want us to do? There's a global pandemic ongoing, but it was about two weeks after the, the lockdown came into place, after I, put, after I put the actual order in, so not good enough in my opinion. Uh, these are very similar to the Seaway, uh, basically modular storage system, and others as well. Before I go into the, the kind of ins and outs of it, uh, it's, right now it's had about four months of continuous usage. I'm the only person that works uh, in, my, in my unit, so it's, uh, it's essentially not getting constant in and out by umpteen different people, but I am in and out pretty much all these draws at one point in the course of my day. They feel very well made. If you're going to be putting them up, make sure you've got two people, you and one other, or you can obviously have two people do it and you can sit and watch and enjoy a cup of tea. Uh, certainly not meant for one person to put up. It comes on a pallet. Uh, the pallet was all pallet wrapped. The weight of each individual, even these, the, just the weight of them, they're quite heavy. Uh, the two end cabinets either side needed to be built up, they were flat packed, the rest of the stuff comes all in the one unit and some of the stuff needs put together but with, with these they're, they're pretty much good to go. One thing I would like to see with them is key to like keys, every single key is different, of course you can then elect to do that at a second stage, you can just get the code and then order some of the locks. But when you're paying over £2,300 for a setup, it'd be good to have each of them keyed alike. Uh, so you've only got the one key to open them all instead of six keys to open them. Uh, there's no real other criticisms to it. The, granted, the, the putting them up was basically about six hours work with two of us working there, but that is what it is. That's because of the size of it. Uh, the, Cupboard on the left hand side to you there. I'll move on to that in a minute. I've got a problem with the door on it. I have taken it apart, put it back together again, and it's still a pain, so I'll show you this. Okay, first I'll apologise now about the weather. Uh, the rain has started to come down, so it might be picked up by the microphone. There's not much you can do about that unless I wait for a dry day, in which case in Scotland, probably wait for months. Uh, so this is the, the cupboard in question. As you can see the door. Is, uh, is shut and it's still doing that. Catches at the bottom and uh, this door up, perfect. And then when you go to shut it, doesn't want to shut, you need to give it a kick at the bottom. I have taken it apart and put it back together again and it's still exactly the same. I'm very mechanically minded uh, and I cannot see anything which there's any issues. It's the same measurement there to there and the bottom one. I don't know what the issue is, it's catching at the bottom and it's needing a kick and then when the lock's actually going in, it needs to be pressed to be locked in place, which is rather annoying. Uh, I haven't contacted them about it, I don't know what they'll do to be honest, other than send out a new one, in which case I would probably, to break this one down, send it away to them. Uh, 
which is going to be a complete and up far because essentially they then need to remove it from all this section. And uh, I can't even say that it's the door that's at fault because the door is square, I've uh, put a, a spirit level on it and it's level compared to that one and it's the same gap at the top so I've no idea what the issue is other than a bit poor machining it's the bottom section that's catching on all the time uh, so yeah, that is, uh, that's quite annoying ok so I'll start at the top and make my way down the, both of these are obviously two different types of shutter this one has got uh, hydraulics there to open and shut again this came fully assembled so there was nothing required it's a nice smooth action to it it's a nice weighted feel when you push down on it as well uh, storage wise inside you'll be able to read up the dimensions online I'm not going to read up just take what it says what I'm going to give you is a kind of useful uh, show about them uh, and my, my kind of findings on them for somebody who's used them for quite a wee while again you can read up the dimensions and that on their website so yeah that one again it's fine it's worth noting as well these don't lock so if you're, uh, if you're worried about security don't put anything in there which might be worried about getting stolen if your unit's not too secure this one the roller shutter is uh, again it's fairly basic uh, these arrived the, the roller shutters themselves had tape along the back and basically had to be fed into the runners themselves uh, it wasn't any kind of great issue to do, a wee bit fidgety but again it was, uh, it was done within a couple of minutes uh, these, the runner in this, uh, there's, no, there's no kind of counterweight action to it it's literally just gravity fed so if you, if you kind of tip when you slam down it does have these rubber grommets there and there to basically kind of cushion any, any impact coming down on it but yeah, I would, uh, certainly there's nothing that's going to break in it if it's going to slam down, it just sounds horrendous but uh, I do like to kind of look after my stuff so it's normally just put down kind of nice and gently I haven't needed to lubricate anything in there at all I wouldn't want to kind of lubricate anything in there because of the polishing pads stuff like that sitting in it uh, obviously you might be different depending on what you're using in there if you want to have a, a smoother kind of action certainly you can put some grease in there and it might do the trick Okay, now on to the double cabinet. Double cabinet is open up such one edge, uh, one side of the door has got a lip running down on it, uh, obviously so you don't need two separate locks, that one slips in front of the other. Uh, I pointed out obviously the wee, the wee issue with the section down there. They are magnet operated as well, so when you shut them over, obviously it should hang you shut, but that one catches at the bottom annoyingly, but this one certainly the magnet holds it in place, no bother at all. Uh, not too flimsy at all, it actually feels pretty sturdy. It's double skinned on it as well, so it's not just a singular uh, bit of aluminium uh, running down it. It does, um, does feel quite sturdy at the top. Again, there's a, a lip running along it and a lip running along the bottom as well, so that adds a bit of structural integrity to it. Uh, inside, you can obviously have your shelves however you want them, as many or as little as you want and there's a the slats as you can see in the back enabling you to actually fasten them on there's no kind of uh, wee pins or anything like that so there's nothing that you're going to lose if you take your, your shelves off you need to remember to store your pins somewhere the shelves have got the, the built in wee brackets kind of into it so that's quite a good thing so if you take your shelves off put them somewhere you're not going to lose them uh, yeah it's a uh, fairly sturdy, it bolts through on the inside into uh, your cabinet, locks everything in place and is incredibly sturdy and there's, uh, there's no really any great danger of this toppling over. Uh, on the top I've got uh, just a tool kit, on the top of it, the tool kit's from about kind of 11 kilograms in weight and there's absolutely no issues at all with that on the roof, there's no beveling, nothing at all uh, in relation to that. Okay, the next one is the single. So again, that as you can see opens fine. It's got the, the section at the top there, the, the kind of magnet shut over point, and again you've got umpteen shelf configurations that you can opt for. Uh, just as sturdy as the other one, again it all links into each other, so there's no way it's going to topple over. Uh, 
very very sturdy construction, exact same kind of door set up as the other one, uh, double skinned uh, on the, the kind of outside edge section and nice kind of chrome effect, uh, so the kind of satin and the chrome effect on the back of it. These wee sections here are basically just to get into the back of the lock if you should need to change it. Try and pop that open so you can see. There we go. So there's your locking mechanism in there, basically. So it's actually quite nice and simple to get in. Should you need to change that, oil it, put basically do a wee bit of maintenance, whatever you think you need to do. When you get it, the keys are basically taped round the inside of them and on a wee hanger bag that comes down. Uh, don't be tempted uh, to, to just kind of pull it because it is actually tied in the inside of it and you might break one of the me mechanisms on the inside. So just take a wee bit of time and pop that out uh, to get access to the key. Okay, next section is the back plating. Uh, this adds a bit of structural stability to it and gives you some options to put stuff actually on it. I've secured my TV onto the back of it. I didn't need to use any bracket. The, the holes fortunately lined up to the actual securing uh, holes on the back of the telly. So I was able to bolt that directly on. Uh, and the same with my, uh, my multi-plug and a socket uh, there. The, the PC is really quite wide so I, I had to essentially grind out a section to get the, the cables and everything into the back of the PC but that's no issue because it's entirely hidden. Each of these from the centre of that square to the centre of that square and down obviously squared is 4 centimetres exactly if that helps in the being able to kind of uh, buy equipment and stuff like that that they're going to look to kind of bolt on it. Uh, each of these slats going up and down as well also have a grommet so you can put uh, cables and stuff like that through. It's already comes uh, rubbered up as well so, as, so uh, there's no need to get extra kind of protection along there if you look to feed some cables and that through it. Okay now this one here is obviously the bin section. Uh, it opens up nice in a funky action on that, uh, it's just a push lock kind of thing. Again, I know I kind of click that down there, I don't normally do that, I normally kind of dampen it with my other finger when I need to open that up. Uh, yeah, so in there you've got your, your bin section. The bin itself isn't terribly big, it's fine for me with coffee cups and stuff like that. Usually once every four days I need to kind of empty that, but it's just me that's working in here. If you've got a couple of people, that will fill up in absolutely no time. There is some storage uh, behind there. Again, I mean just kind of room behind the bin for to go. I've just got other bags in there to use for the bin. Uh, the kind of action on that, nice and smooth. It kind of feels uh, like there's, there's no play in it. Kind of, you know, that's wiggling about there, but there's hardly any play on that. If you want to tighten it up, you can just tighten it up using those wee screws. I've done that when I first got it and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been fine ever since uh, and it's a nice kind of flush fitting on it. That being kind of stainless steel as well, it'll get kind of covered in fingerprints uh, but again you can just give that a wee wipe. Uh, this area here is for your, your towels. Uh, the, again, it's, uh, it's quite handy, you've always got your towels uh, should you need them. What I'll do is I'll just measure that for in case anybody's looking to know the kind of measurements uh, for that. So that is from end to end, 23 and a half centimetres. So you know basically what size of blue roll uh, you need. So 23 and a half centimetres from that section to that section. And then to replace them, it's just two thumb screws on there, on either side. You just take them out and you can get them sorted. The underside of it. It's just a, a, a kind of L-shaped latch with a wee, uh, a wee kind of knob on it that goes up and fits on. Incredibly simple and easy. And there you've got quite a deep drawer in there. Showed some bags. Uh, again, depends what you what you want to, to store in there yourself, but uh, you can store any kind of manner of things. Uh, the drawer itself is double roller, or sorry, double uh, kind of hinge action. So, so you've got as you pull it in, the, 
the one section of the hinge starts to go in and then the second section goes in. The, the movement feels very, very, very smooth. There's no, there's no notching, there's no jerking on it whatsoever. It is a very, very kind of smooth action, as is the same for all the drawers. Uh, the, again, because there's two runners, uh, sorry, there's four runners to either side, you are feeling that it's going to take a lot of weight in there should you need it. Again, you can check with the manufacturer specifications for the specific weight for each of the drawers as well. When you pull them out, there's no kind of specific locking latch. As you pull it out, it's kind of free. It'll push in and out, so that is no bother at all. But when you get to the end bit, you push it in and it stops, and then it's another wee push in and it pops in another five mil or so and actually locks it in place. So the next one is the roller drawer that has the coasters in the bottom of it. So there's a gap there, you put your hands in and you pull it out and basically swivel it about as you please. There is a four like coasters on the bottom of it and one of them has a locking latch. Hey, yes, that one back there. So yeah, the uh, again, nice smooth build action, the, the coasters on it are quite big, so if your workshop isn't a nice even floor, it shouldn't get caught up uh, in it, it should have the, the diameter of the, the, the coaster to actually roll over, little small bumps. Again, pretty much the exact same hinged action as the drawer there, uh, pulls out and then stops dead at the end section, and then when you push it in, it stops and then it's another wee shove just to get that wee lock bit in there. And again, the lock section is dead center. Uh, two grip handles as well on the top for being able to grab it when it's underneath there. Uh, nice, again, as I says, nice smooth lower action on this as well. Uh, you do get the feeling that it's going to last for years. Uh, everything feels pretty heavy duty on it. Uh, there's two kind of bump stops on either side as well, one there and one there, which actually saves whatever uh, kind of modular storage you have either side of it from getting bumped and dented, uh, unless you go in at an absolute angle, which you, you shouldn't really be doing, obviously. Uh, as long as you get it kind of tailored in and you push it in, these wee bump stops will stop it from damaging any of the modular uh, storage systems on either side of it. Okay, nothing incredibly special about this one, it's just a simple cupboard, one shelf in it, and again, it can be moved up and down, uh, and it's got that uh, kind of magnetic one, just purely on that side, and then again, it locks on that section. Uh, yeah, again, nice sturdy uh, kind of feel to them, they're, uh, they're quite kind of uh, thick. Uh, again, that section there, so they don't feel flimsy at all. You haven't kind of push it, pull it a wee touch to get it to do that. Uh, while some down here as well, talk about the, the kind of wood surface. Uh, the I've like, I'd basically elected to the, the, the wood surface because I think it's kind of it, it just looks nice. Plus, it ties in with kind of other stuff in the unit. Uh, I would have liked a strip running along there, uh, so you don't see all the the separate kind of sheets which have been pressed together to do it. Uh, that might just be being a wee bit pernickety, some people might not kind of bother about it. I just think it would have been a wee nice touch, just to have a wee bit of vinyl running along there. Uh, I might just pick up a wee bit of black vinyl myself and put it along it, I just think it might kind of tidy it up a wee touch. Uh, the top of it as well, again, incredibly kind of hard wearing feel, it's, uh, it's, it cleans up pretty easily. Uh, if you want to use any kind of, uh, kind of normal detergents and that on it. Uh, there's, again, I don't put a lot of uh, equipment in that on my, uh, the, the workbench kind of area. Uh, I don't have any kind of cause or reason to do that. So, again, if you're going to be putting a lot of equipment, stuff that might just kind of scratch or kind of scuff into the wood, you might want to look at getting another bit of wood to go on the top of it just as a sacrificial layer or I like for the stainless steel one, I think the stainless steel one, I think it's only an extra 50 quid on top. Uh, if you wanted to go for that, again, I quite like the, wood, the look of the wood stuff, it ties in with other stuff in my unit, so I kind of went for that. Uh, but the other roller drawers are exactly the same as this, 
only it doesn't actually move about, they're, they're stationary inside. So I'm not going to go and show you basically every single little dot. It's just a kind of waste of your time and mine. So yeah, it's a, it's a cracking bit of kit. I like obviously being able to get everything stored away. There's various different uh, modular setups that you can go for. Obviously the name being modular, can I, uh, you can get the point. But what I would have kind of picked differently in hindsight is that wee bin section. I probably would have elected for another one of these or another one of the, the actual uh, storage, uh, the drawers, instead of the, the bin thing. Because the bin is it's pretty small uh, and the, the space would have been better suited with another cupboard because I've, I've got a wee kitchen area anyway that I could have put the bin in. But it came as part of that modular setup and it didn't give me the option to change it. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's just something you might want to consider if you've got a lot of people working in your in your workspace. That bin will fill up in absolutely no time whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoy the wee uh, run through review of the, the Clark HD Plus modular uh, storage system. If you liked it, just leave a comment. If you never liked it, leave a comment as well and I can argue back. Uh, but yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to subscribe. Uh, it would help me out. And uh, yeah, take care and stay safe. Thanks.